Welcome to the next lesson from me. I have a uh, hallway teacher. I'm the hallway teacher. Excuse me, I burped. <clears throat> okay. This lesson is about the first line of the story you're going to write to be really good. <coughs> the first line of your story needs to slap your reader right in the face. Oh! How dare you? <coughs> you know that saying you only get one chance to make a first impression, blah blah blah. It's a lie. It's true though in books. Your first line will either get your reader to keep reading or they'll throw your book in the mud puddle. Those are the only two choices you have. So what, how do you write a, a great first line? You imagine you're a child again or you're still a child and your parents or parent or guardian call a family meeting. There's nothing good that's going to come out of this and you know it. You walk down the hall, you sit down at the kitchen table and your parents are like this and they're very serious and they start by saying there's something I need to tell you and they have that look in their face and it's like it's the line after that it's what they say after that that makes a great first line it's the blunt force not thinking just saying what you feel sentence that comes out there's no sugar coating it you don't make it all fluffy and nice like one day I was walking through the woods and the flowers were blooming and the birds were chirping and you know I just, no it has to be something that's blunt in your face unrehearsed almost it's it's like you say something and you're not even you don't think about it Somebody says, give me a sentence about an orange. And the first thing that pops into your head, you say, I hate oranges. Now, is that not an intriguing first line of a story? I think it is. Mark Garza, no eating in class. So, here are a few examples for you of great first lines. Now these were written by good authors like Moby Dick. Herman Melville wrote Moby Dick in 1851 or so. His first line is, call me Ishmael. That's pretty cool. Jane Austen, in Pride and Prejudice, her first line is, It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Oh yes, Leo Tolstoy, 
in Anna Karenina. Happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. I don't know. That just doesn't... I know it's supposed to be really good, but I just... I don't see it. Vale of Two Cities. This is a long one, so hold on. Lenberg, turn off the phone. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. That's all one sentence. Oh yeah, but it was pretty good. This one's interesting. This is Lawrence Stern's Tristram Shandy. It's one sentence. Be prepared. I wish either my father or my mother, or indeed both of them, as they were in duty both equally bound to it, had minded what they were about when they begot me. Had they duly considered how much depended upon what they were then doing, that not only the production of a rational being was concerned in it, but that possibly the happy formation and temperature of his body, perhaps his genius in the very cast of his mind. And for art, they knew to the contrary, even the fortunes of his whole house might take their turn from the humors and dispositions which were then uppermost, had they duly weighed and considered all this and proceeded accordingly, I may verily persuade it I should have made a quite different figure in the world from that in which the reader is likely to see me. That's a great line. I love acting. I just, oh my God. Meow. Meow. David Copperfield. Whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life, or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. Isn't that awesome? That's so awesome. <laughs> Edward George Bulwer Lytton's Paul Clifford. It was a dark and stormy night. The rain fell in torrents, except at occasional intervals, when it was checked by a violent gust of wind which swept up the streets, for it is in London that our scene lies rattling along the housetops and fiercely agitating the scanty flame of the lamps that struggled against the darkness. Okay. Okay, so this is, oh, D Don Quixote, written by Miguel de Cervantes. Somewhere in La Mancha, in a place whose name I do not care to remember, a gentleman lived not long ago, one of those who has a lance and ancient shield on a shelf and keeps a skinny nag and a greyhound for racing. Hmm. Fyodor Dost Dostoevsky? Notes from Underground. Sorry for obliterating the name. I am a sick man. I am a spiteful man. Isn't that, that's a great first line. Wowzer, wowzer. Okay. Daniel Defoe, writing Robinson Crusoe. I was born in the year 1632 in the city of York, of a good family, though not of that country. My father being a foreigner, a foreigner of Bremen, who settled first at Hull. He got a good estate by merchandise and leaving off his trade lived afterward at York from whence he had married my mother whose relations were named Robinson, a very good family in that country and from whom I was called Robinson Krutznar. 
but by the usual corruption of words in England, we are now called, nay, we call ourselves, and write our name, Crusoe. And so my companions always called me. That's good. George Eliot in Middlemarch. Miss Brooke had that kind of beauty which seems to be thrown into relief by poor dress. Hmm. Interesting. So anyway, those are exam some examples of great first lines. So, and I found that on the site AmericanBookReview.org under 100 Best Lines. So, my examples of good first liners, which you cannot use, now they are copyrighted out in social media now. I'm the first one saying them, so you can't use them. I had never seen a dinosaur until one ended up dead in my front yard. You know how life can be so wonderful and full of hope? Mine isn't one of those lives. Here's another one. I went on the internet today to look for a recipe for arsenic and tomato bisque. Hi. My name is Wendy. So those are just a few of my suggestions but you want to grab your audience. Justine Shop, please stop grabbing Melissa's hair. This is not funny. And I'm an anaconda. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's it for today. Make your first line be just as awful, just as in your face as when your parents sit you down and say, I have something to tell you, honey. You know it's, you know it's going to be shocking. It doesn't have to be bad, but it needs to be shocking or just You know, it's it's like when somebody says to you, look, I'm not going to be mad at you. Just tell me what you're thinking. And you say, I hate your hair. It's, it's like that. Love you guys. Peace and love. We're all in this together.
I don't really know a man. I just feel like teaching here. I used to be a cashier. I'm the hallway teacher, yeah, yeah, yeah.